This week is Pinball Week at Spratronics Learning Lab, and we're exploring the Retro Classic and looking at all the simple machines that go into designing this fun game. We've got levers to move the flappers and hit the pinball around. We're also working on spring-loaded launchers, just like you would start a pinball game. And what we're doing as well, and for this YouTube video, is we're creating our very own pinball machines using our LEGO Robotics. Join me to see how we build this and how we code this to be a fun and exciting game. Let's do it. With our crazy carnival game week, we're gonna be playing with energy transfer and collisions. For our build today, we're gonna be making a pinball machine. Sophie finds a game she doesn't recognize. It's a junior pinball game. She thinks this junior pinball game will be easy. There's only one obstacle. Now an obstacle is something that gets in your way, something you have to overcome. We're gonna build a junior pinball game like Sophie's and try it out. Let's build. For our build today, we're gonna start by using both of the big plates. And what we'll do is we'll start by flipping them over and take three of the green plates and put one at each end and then one right in the middle. And then that way we can put the second plate on the other side and connect those together. We want to give our pinball machine a little bit of a lift off the ground and so we're going to attach some blue and orange plates around the side. And then once our bottom is complete, we can flip our pinball machine over and continue building. We're going to attach an orange beam onto the end of this and put two black Technic pegs into it. And this is where later in the build our hub is going to be attached. This is also going to be the backboard of our game and how we're going to attach our obstacle to everything. And so we put our two Technic pieces in, leaving three holes in between all of them. Next up, we need to build some rails around our game, and we're gonna do that by using the blue beams on the top, and then the green beams the rest of the way down. These beams also will hold our two plates together right here. Next, we're gonna need a place to attach our flippers. And if you've ever played pinball before, the flippers are the buttons or the little flappers at the bottom of the game that hit the pinball up into the game area. I attach these just a hair too high. We'll start with the green and then we'll put the white attachment there. Start with the green and put the white attachment here. And at the very bottom, we want to have a bumper, something to catch the ball whenever it falls down. And I just build it from the side to the bottom, and then an orange piece in the middle, and then our next piece. And I'm noticing that that is off by just a little bit, and it's because this piece is off. So scoot everything over just by one peg, and it'll be nice and symmetrical and lined up. Next, we're going to put some Lego Technic pieces up here at the very top in the first blue piece. And these are going to be attachment points later on so that our board can raise up. And a mistake I see a lot of times is folks will attach at the very end. We want to count down to the third hole and attach it there. So these are going to be what hold our pinball machine up to make it a ramp. We'll put one of those purple pieces on each side. Next up, we have our red sloped pieces as well as two of these orange pieces with a round hole right in the middle. And we're gonna attach those along the top and it'll close this little gap in. It'll be a nice decoration. And then these orange pieces are going to be useful for making our pinball machine a ramp. And then up at the very top, 
couple more decorations and to hold this orange piece onto the red piece, we have our yellow sloped pieces. It's looking like a pinball machine. Next up, we take two of these white pieces that have a Technic attachment piece there and then an axle on the other side, and they'll go into each of those orange blocks with a single hole inside. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna allow a pinball machine to stand up and you'll see where the white piece keeps it from rotating all the way around. And then down at the bottom, we'll put two more Technic pieces in, the very bottom green beam. And this is gonna be useful for attaching rubber bands later so that our flippers will fall back into place after striking the ball. Now it's time to put our flippers on, two of these orange pieces. And you can put them on several different ways, but the way we recommend, use this very middle hole to attach as the pivot point. And what you're making is a simple machine called a lever, and that's the fulcrum right there. And these are gonna be used to hit the pinball up and down. Now, the directions call, call for a yellow rubber band, and we have used these rubber bands so often that we found that just tying a knot in a regular rubber band works just fine. And we put the knot end up on the peg so that it doesn't get caught on any pegs. Again, the knot end up on the peg and around the flipper. And then this way, as you pull the flippers, they come back to the bottom and reset themselves each time. All right, now let's start working on the hub. And you'll remember the hub is the brain of our robot, the brain of our creation. This is what talks to our computer and runs the code. All right, so I'm gonna lay my hub out just like my directions show, and the button is in the front. And I'm gonna put two Technic pegs into the side. And the next thing I'll do is attach this purple piece with the holes on the top and the bottom. And then I flip my hub upside down. And I want to see that my light is over here. And I'll put two more Technic hub, Technic connectors in the top. Now we're ready to attach our hub to our board. And the holes that we're gonna use are these two holes. This piece at the bottom just gives it some space and rests at the bottom. And there we go. So now we are attached and ready to put our obstacle together. What we'll need for that is a motor. And so we'll start by just putting one of these very small red axles into the motor. And once we do that, we like to line up the degrees. And then that way, whenever you're coding, it's really clear where your motor is moving to. On top of that red axle, we're gonna attach a white piece. And then into that, we're gonna start by building a little attachment. And we start with a small red axle, and we put it inside one of these red tubes. And then in the other end, we'll put our white Technic and Axle piece. And all of that will insert into a green round piece. And this is gonna be an arm that is gonna be used to start our game, as well as to be an obstacle. And it'll just plug right in there. All right, we're gonna need a way to attach this motor. And so we'll turn it upside down and on the back side of it, we'll put two Technic connector pieces. And then on that, we're gonna put a yellow beam. And this will go at the very end of that beam with my pegs facing away from me. And then we can attach it onto the hub. And this will hang out over the board without touching it, but just close enough where it'll run into any balls that come through it. We'll go ahead and plug this in to our hub. Turn our motor around. 
set a ball right there, and we can set this up. And our pinball machine is just about ready to go. So here's our challenge. We're going to create a program that starts this game for us so that we can start playing some junior pinball. And then as we go through that, we'll create some different variations of the game and come up with some cool obstacles for our ball to bounce around through. All right, before we do any coding, we're going to need to connect our hub. And we start by clicking the button up at the top, and we press the button one time on the top of our hub, which will make the light start flashing. In the Chrome web app, we just click open, and then select our hub. We pair it, and it's going to let us know that everything's connected, and then the light will turn solid. So we're going back to our project. We're using word blocks for this today, and you can absolutely create this program in icon blocks. You just create a new program and use the blue motor blocks in order to move your obstacle. So we're gonna say when the program starts, set the speed to 25%, and we want our motor to move to position zero. And position zero is gonna be all the way back here. And I can see that my line and my open circle line up, letting me know that that's position zero. We start the program with the ball on top, and let's test it out and see if it works. Great, it drops the ball down. Now, that's a really easy way to play, and so we're going to add a little bit of a randomness to this so that this game will become more unpredictable. And we're gonna pick a random number between 180 and 180. And so this obstacle is going to move to a different spot every time we play. So let's see where it goes. And we'll try to keep the ball in movement for a little while. All right, we'll hit play. And we can play a little bit of pinball right now. And if this was all you were doing, a fun way to do this is just to see how long you can keep the ball going before it ends up down here at the bottom bumper. Let's stop on our program. And now we'll move into the next part. A way to make this game a little bit more fun is to make it more unpredictable. Right now, this arm is facing straight down and it doesn't move throughout the game. And so what we'd love to do is to make it move around in a different way. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it repeat 10 times. And what I'd love for it to do is to have a random speed. So we're gonna change it. So every time the speed changes, set speed two, and I want a random number between zero and 10. And I want it to go all the way up to 100%. So set speed to one to 100%, so I have no idea how fast it's going to go. And then I want the motor to start moving. And I'd like this motor to move several times. And we're gonna change it to go from zero to 360 degrees. So that means this motor could move to any particular spot. And then I think it should wait one second, and then it should do it again. We're going to use the same, pick a random, 0 to 360. And if you wanted, you could copy and paste this over and over again to make it move more times in between each turn. So, when we hit play on this, the game should release the ball, wait a second, and then change speeds and move a few times and it should do that 10 times. And then whenever it's all done, I think it should play a sound to let us know that our game is over. I don't want the cat sound. I'd love just an applause to let me know that our game is over. So play sound, applause one, and we're ready to play. So we'll reset the game by moving our obstacle up 
We'll set the ball on top, and then we'll hit play and see how our program runs. And throughout the game, I noticed that the piece is moving a little bit. Caught the ball right there. Oh, and I lost. I'll keep playing. And I lost again. It's a little harder when you're watching the obstacle up there. And the applause happened, letting us know that the game was over. Another thing that you can do, try to add some more obstacles to this game. What can you do to make it more exciting and look more like a pinball machine? Can't wait to see what you come up with.